This morning we're going to look at some scripture verses in uh, Jeremiah chapter 48 verse 11 says this Moab been eased from his youth and he has sat alone his leaves and has not been emptied from vessel to vessel neither has he gone in captivity therefore his taste remaineth in him his sense not changed happy out today on what I believe what's wrong in our uh, fundamental Baptist churches today so many churches today I mean I'm talking about uh, a lot of uh, fundamental churches today have made lies or refuge and under falsehood hid themselves and just like uh, Jeremiah said Moab been eased from the youth I can say that about the uh, our Baptist churches today they've been eased settled on their leaves not been emptied vessel to vessel their taste remaineth in them they've not gone in captivity They've not uh, walked that circumspectly walk. And so uh, I'm going to help you out just a little bit if I can. And said the sense not changed. What's wrong? So many of your churches today have neither cold nor hot. You know what the Bible says about the lead this in church age. Uh, I preached on the street for about 10, 11, 12 years. I don't know exactly how long, but uh, on ch in the streets of Chattanooga, Tennessee with Brother Brian Diggs, and another young preacher who had disqualified himself in these last days. A double married preacher who is now gone with the tulip doctor, false doctrine crowd. When we started preaching, by the way, practically every Friday, Saturday night, through rain, sleet, snow, cold winter nights, we were on the street corners of Chattanooga, Tennessee. Also, uh, wine over water. They call it every, it's, I think, last September, uh, every year. I call it wine over hell. We uh, preached practically every night on River Bend around uh, 10, uh, 10, 11 years. By the way, when we started uh, preaching, we preached on Wall Street Bridge at that time. There was no crowd down town at this time I'm speaking about. By the way, there were about two beer joints when we started. Uh, when we started preaching downtown, before we quit preaching and went different ways, there was over 30 places sold beer, whatever, from 1st Street to 4th Street. as 217. I don't know how many places over there now. I've not been over there several years now. Uh, at this time, Chattanooga, Tennessee was rated 57 in the nation. And violent crimes, practically every night in Chattanooga, there was a shooting spree. I want you to listen to this video I'm going to insert here in a few minutes uh, where we preached uh, downtown on 2nd Street and uh, see what you think about it. Pretty rough mess and there's some uh, words in there. you, you got to use discretion. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get to that in a minute. Uh, I've been told more times than one while preaching on the streets of Chattanooga. Why do you scream and yell like this? It, well, if your house is on fire, that's what I told them many times. If your house is on fire and burn it down in the middle of the night, and you were in it, would you want me to yell, far, far, or you want me to say, far, far, far? And that's the way I think this world is. Their house is on fire, and it's burning down, amen. And judgment is up on America big time. It's like I said, discretion uh, uh, is used. Uh, for this video, you'll see after a while if you'll listen to it. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry about the curse word, but I don't see how vile, how wicked uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee is. Do you know that Dr. Phil Kidd won't apologize with, with his vulgar words uh, when he preaches from the pulpit? But he swear from the pulpit that he don't curse. By the way, I've heard him say while preaching that people come just to hear him curse. The Bible says in James 1 8, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. And back that up, I like to use scripture. I, I quote a lot of scripture when I preach in the word church. Uh, I, I'll, I'll probably use 50, 75 scriptures uh, anytime, any place I preach. If, uh, if anybody let me preach anymore, amen. Be not deceived, evil communication corrupt good manners. 1 Corinthians 15 33. Last days, uh, Phil Kidd's. Uh, Son, raised in the fundamental Baptist movement from a child. Now he sports another way, a uh, no-name church up in North Carolina, and that don't bother Dr. Kidd at all. Now, I'm talking about uh, preachers today, driven by greed, ecumenical movement, uh, contemporary churches, 
and new Bibles, new ways. Did you know even the great church of Tennessee, uh, Temple of Chattanooga, that Lee Robertson passed for many years, they removed, they removed the Baptists from over the church doors and removed the ancient landmarks with their fathers have established. Nowadays, they sport bright lights, uh, compromising, worldly compromising, I'm talking about compromising music in their auditorium and all sorts of the Bible. I told you, I've said this many times, we preached over, I think, 2008 and protested what they were doing in that auditorium at uh, where Lee Robertson, Dr. Lee Robertson, pastor for many years. They're going in new ways. They've uh, opened up new doors. Uh, and I'm telling you, they're falling away. And they removed the old landmarks in their churches. The same thing's happening in America. Breaking down America way of life. Removing ancient plaques. Monument, crosses, Ten Commandments, etc. I could go on and on and on. But now we have a church in D.C. removing the first president, George Washington, plaque from the church. Leaders uh, at that church that George Washington attended one time decided that a plaque under the first president of the United States must be removed. And that's just what we're doing in these last days. We're removing the old landmarks. We're moving the Baptists off and going with another way and uh, I'm telling you uh, the old song we used to sing the old country song years ago changing partners that's exactly what so many Baptists had done I preached on the Baptists because I've been a Baptist for 38 years Amen. contemporary praise and worship service uh, charismatic contemporary I'm talking about this worldly stuff and going with the world and everything that concerns everything that a rock band would use in a bar somewhere Amen and the, uh, the the music uh, and worship is spreading across all denomination lines. Uh, this is setting the modern day uh, church with their modern day contemporary Christian worship. And music are setting the standards and gradually lowering all sorts of morality and doctrines remind me of Dr. Phil Kidd and his son with his ragtime band. And Dr. Kidd, when uh, Paul preached up there last year, I mean, he said that band was second to none. Amen. Listen to it sometime. But that don't bother most people today. They're so mixed up in the world and the things of the world. That's the reason why we don't preach on nothing no more. Amen. You make somebody mad. Matthew chapter 24, verse 5. Many shall come in my name and deceive. How many? Many. Beware, lest any man support you with flocks in vain, deceit after Christian men, after root of the world, and not after Christ. Amen. It's contemporary. Liberal preachers and pastors. I've never seen so many disqualified, double married uh, pastors in all my life still mount the pulpit every Lord's day. I say this if, uh, if a child predator was in your church, wouldn't you want to know about it? A child pedophile pastor, Ronnie Sutton, other churches still stepped him in their church. And this, uh, this last year sometime, WSSO Elf uh, up in uh, Kentucky, uh, Baptist uh, Radio Broad Station, I mean, they accepted him, let him preach on their station, and he's still preaching funerals, still passing church, as far as I know this day. I, listen, I, we need some more John the Baptist. I've got to sign up in my yard right now. If... Would you let John the Baptist preach in your church if he come to your church today? Probably not. Probably not. I, I hear in Titus 2, chapter uh, 2, verse 15, it says, These things speak and exhort with all authority. Let no man despise thee. And you think about John the Baptist. That's the reason why nobody wants John the Baptist in church. There's so much fornication, uh, committing adultery, and all this stuff happening, and all this worldly stuff in his churches. And this is what John done. John called out whole Herod, didn't he? Oh, Herod, that take her out. Uh, being approved of him for her death, his brother Philip's wife, and for all the evil which Herod had done. We don't want to do that. Do we? we just drive off the uh, brethren, wouldn't we? We just drive off the, all the church, and we wouldn't have nobody to sit and listen to you, would you? <laughs> hey, Amen. Do you know about uh, Dr. Ronnie Sutton? And Dr. Sammy Allen plastered him on his uh, poster in uh, 2011 to uh, preach for him after this happened in 2008. Now listen to this court record. I've got the whole uh, court record uh, downloaded on my computer. And it, it, court, record, court records in Aberdeen, Mississippi. Ronnie answered under oath to swear the truth, whole truth. So help you God. And they uh, answered this. Ronnie said, I do. 
Preacher don't care to lie. I mean, the lying don't bother so many preachers nowadays. They're like uh, cursing uh, Dr. Phil Kidd. <laughs> Amen. And in October 2008, Ronnie admitted wifly, mischievous, unlawfully stalked a 13-year-old girl. Ronnie made incredible threats against her intended, placed her in reasonable fear of great bodily injury and repeatedly harassment and requesting her to get in the car with him. That's what the court record said. Look it up and see. You can, all you got to do is uh, check it out down there in uh, Mississippi. And the court asked him, Ronnie, did you, in fact, commit this crime? Ronnie answered, yes, sir. You remember now, he, he swore under oath. He was a, a child predator. He tried to get this uh, little girl in the car with him and got caught at this little girl's house. Still blowing smoke, still preaching, still pastoring. Uh, in her Baptist uh, churches today. I, I, now, we need to move on just a little bit. I hardly ever say anything about the uh, uh, lazy, sorry missionaries uh, uh, who travel around the world, land and sea, and they won't even go to the next door neighbor and, and speak to them about their soul salvation. Amen. I mean, they're too lazy to make an honest living. They take up preaching, start begging for money, fleecing the flock of God. And this is what I say, a missionary. I can tell you a lot of stories on missionaries, but I've not got time to fool with the missionaries. I've got enough to, on my mind right now uh, saying what I'm saying about the, uh, the Baptist movement. Amen. Hey, if you need money, get a job. The Bible said in Thessalonians, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't work, you don't eat. So many preachers, just like I said, went even cross road to their neighbor's house. But they'll travel hundreds and thousands of miles over land and sea to start a mission work. Beware, folks. The great falling way has begun in these last days. And I'm like Apostle Paul. You know what Apostle Paul said? I mean, he, he that church where he preached in Galatians a little bit, and boy, they was good to him. Uh, they looked out their eyes and gave it to him, and he started uh, burning down and, and no, without getting on their sin. And then he posed this question. Am I there for? Become your enemy, because I tell you the truth, and you truth shall make you free. Free. I know for that we've got to move on. Right, would you invite Apostle Paul or Stephen, that man full of the Holy Ghost, or John the Baptist, come to your church this Sunday? Like I said about uh, what I said about my sign out in the yard today. I've had signs in my yard uh, for uh, years and years. You know, I've had abortion signs in my year. Uh, yard for years and no church around here ever offered to give me one red dime to put up a new poster. Do you get that? Now what's wrong with our Baptist churches? And if you can prove me what I'm preaching wrong, you do it. Call me up if you want to. Speak to me. I don't get mad at you. I mean, I'll just tell you the truth. Amen. I'm telling you there's something wrong. And this is what uh, Jesus called John the Baptist, the greatest preacher born a woman and buddy did he preach i mean uh, with a camel suit on and a beard and long hair and, and you wouldn't you wouldn't even dare to let that man come in your church would you amen uh, this a uh, religious world i mean you know what they said uh, the religious world said john had a devil but thank be to god jesus christ said john was the greatest amen i mean uh, jesus said that you know, he was preaching down in the river one day, and and he, he saw the Pharisees, that sat, I call that the religious world, the old uh, profess they know God, in works they now, being a bundle of disobedience unto every good work, but they say, I love Jesus. Oh, I'm, I got born the, a long, long time ago in the family of God, and, and I know Jesus, but I asked you this, do Jesus know you? And this is what uh, John, I mean, he, we got this crowd right today in the Baptist movement, that a sick bunch, amen, uh, to say you don't have to repent, and you can't repent, because you don't have any sin to repent of. i tell you what uh, Ezekiel 14, 6 said, repent all your iniquity, and John 1, 7 said, yeah, God, Jesus Christ will cleanse you from all sin, and the Bible says if you do sin, we have the apple with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, amen, for the sins of the whole world. This is what John said. Oh, generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath of God? To bring forth fruit meets for repentance. And think not to say within yourself, We have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to rise up 
children unto Abraham. And now the axe, now I ain't getting down to the nitty gritty. Now the axe is laid at the root of the tree. What's he going to do with the axe at the root of the tree? He's going to hew down every tree that don't bring forth good fruit. That's what he's going to do, amen. He's going to hew it down. What's he going to do with it? Cast it in the fire. Have you checked your fruits lately? Hey, the Bible said in Proverbs, fruits of righteous tree of life, he that when the soul is wise. Yeah, you've been trying to win any souls. I'm not saying you will win any souls, but I'm saying, are you trying to win any souls? Amen. And Jesus said, listen, Jesus said, one of you strides, Pharisees, hypocrites, for you're like and wide sepulchre, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead man's bones and all unclean. Jesus said that the, the Pharisees and their tribes and, and uh, all these people, just like today, I can say this about a lot of Baptists. I know, amen. But you oh, you can't preach on brother. You just got to, uh, you know, you got to pacify them. You got to put a, give them some uh, uh, bubble gum and, and two shoes and uh, all this stuff. Preach on all that stuff. Tell them how good he is. No, tell him how bad he is. Amen. Uh, Jesus said another place. He said, "You serpent, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell?" Uh, and Jesus said, "Did oh, Jesus just loves everybody." I, I had on Facebook just here a few days ago. Uh, somebody was talking about the, uh, love the sinner and hate the sin. I asked the question: uh, Who goes to hell, the sinner or the sinner? Think about it. Amen. You can go to hell yourself, and Jesus laughs your calamity one day. You say, I don't believe that. We don't preach that to our church. We just preach on love and believe in multitudes, go to church, go to hell. Uh, deceived, amen. Come as you are, leave as you come. Just like I said about Stephen. This is what he, he, what, this is what he preached. Try it in your church sometimes, Pastor. You're afraid to. Ain't you? I'll tell you, you're afraid to. Stephen said, you bunch of stiff necks and uncircumcised and here, you always... Resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers do. So do you. A lot of people don't even know what the Holy Ghost is. I know it's a charismatic crowd to get carried away with the Holy Ghost, but I'm talking about I'm talking about the real Holy Ghost, amen. That one lives within you and abides in you and will be in you forever if you've been born in the family of God right away, amen. Look at Apostle Paul. He didn't fool around either, but we, we, I, I never have heard this scripture preached in all my life in any Baptist churches. Uh, uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter verse 13, verse 10, Oh, stop tell thee, full of mischief, thy child of the devil, in the all-righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right way of the Lord? And if you uh, look over in James chapter 4, 4, it talks about uh, adulterers. I mean, you can't run with the world, friend. I just like uh, in uh, First Corinthians, Second uh, Corinthians six fifteen, uh, what concord has Christ with Bel? You know what Bel is? That's a, that's a I mean, that's a, of the devil, amen. Wickedness, and no good in him, amen. And this is what I like about Apostle Paul. He said, preach the word. Hey, in season, out of season, preach the word. But we don't want to preach the word in these last days. This is the worst church age I've ever laid eyes on. Prove me wrong, amen, pastor, preacher, missionary. Paul exhorted young Timothy, speak these things, rebuke the, and, and listen, that's what I like. I, re, I reprove, 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 and rebuke, and exhort. If you got anybody else, amen. So many uh, preacher, pastor, missionaries got locked, Joe, when it comes to preaching on worldly sin and hell for her. Vance Haldner, an old preacher up in uh, North Carolina. I really like to hear him preach. Uh, eight, I believe he uh, uh, cataloged sand. Amen. By the way, I'll give you some Bible help about uh, this just in a minute. Just like King Saul. You know what the King Saul done? Uh, he feared the people. You know what happened King Saul? God removed him from being king. I mean, he finally killed him. I know the story. It may, it may be controversial to you, but it ain't to me. I, and uh, listen... Bible said for rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Rebellion. Rebel on, the God, rebel on God. And see what God thinks about you. And it's sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness. Boy, stubbornness. I've never seen such stubbornness in all my life. Uh, these Baptists right now today in so many uh, churches, uh, they'll argue they argue over anything and everything to uh, prove you're wrong. Stubbornness is iniquity and adultery. That's what God thinks about it. Uh, uh, there ain't no Baptist heart and get along with nobody no more. I just think uh, several years ago, we used to bring out chair, chairs. 
uh, fill the church aisles in her Baptist churches in this era that I'm living in. Now, you, you, know, you bring out chairs and you wouldn't even fill the chairs. Amen. God rejected uh, Samuel. And uh, Samuel said, boy, I've sinned. I've transgressed the commandments. Of the I mean, at least he feared the people. And the Bible said the fear of a man bringeth a snare. And that's what I'm talking about, Vance Havner. That's what he said. He said, uh, while we got so many cross-eyed preachers in their pulpit today, they uh, served the congregation face and obeyed their voices like Saul did. That's the reason they ain't got no power. That's the reason they can't get nothing done today. That's the reason why they're in the world. Like I said about Moab, it's not been emptied uh, from vessel to vessel. He set it on his knees and he sent the same old scent. You know, you know a lot of preachers still smoke today. <laughs> oh, you don't get on smoking pants wearing television and all that. Well, I used to preach on television hard. And since the internet come out, I had to change and I'll be held accountable for that. I know it will. But uh, what's different having the internet and the television said amen? But it's got off and on button. I hope to God you use it right. Amen. That's enough of that. Uh, it's like I said. Uh, Apostle Paul, uh, oh, I'll get back to Peter first. Let's go back to Peter. Peter said, oh, to obey God rather than man. He said, hey, you can't preach there in our town. That's what they told me down there in Montgomery, Alabama on the Rotunda uh, steps. Hey, man, the police said, you can't preach here. I took about 10 steps back, and uh, Brother Brian Biggs uh, had a sign in his hand. He twisted that double and throwed it down, I think. And I stood back and preached about 15 to 20 minutes. And there was an old, uh, a, a gray headed, fat, overweight uh, preacher over there and told a buddy of mine when he got up and preached, uh, uh, You can't preach here. This ain't the right time. And they some boys down, uh, I ain't going to name them because I don't take up for them anyway. Their leader died just here a while back. But they said, uh, dollar, day late and a dollar short. And boy, some of them people there, uh, they got red hot. And one of them go out there in the street corner. They wanted them to leave. I've seen it all, amen. I'm talking about, uh, Paul said, I preach not to please men. If I preach to please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. Uh, God uh, told, uh, they seek you'll be not dismayed at their looks. Hey, he said, their, their forehead. I mean, it's hard as a stone, harder than a flint. You know how hard a flint is? That's the way some Baptists are. I mean, their head. I mean, harder than a flint. He said, but hey, see, you don't be afraid of them. Don't be terrified of them. They're a rebellious people. And I shall speak the word unto them where they will hear where they will forbear. They're most rebellious in Ezekiel 2, 7. The uh, Bible said, and the Apostle Paul said, Why unto me if I preach not the gospel to He said, Whoa, you know what a woe is? You look it up sometime. Most of you don't have the least idea. <laughs> Man. Just like uh, Paul said, For I do now persuade men, our God, or do seek to please men. If I yet will please men, I shall not be a servant of Christ. I just like uh, Paul said, But as we were loud, you know the qualification of the Pisher, and it sure gets the Dr. Phil Kidd. He's a cursed, lying Pisher, amen. You say, I don't like that. I like him. He's the best preacher ever. He can. Yeah, he's the best preacher I ever heard, too. But he's one astray. He's driven by greed. He's getting wealthy. He's getting rich. And he's on television stations. He's on the Facebook here where you look, amen. He's everywhere now. And the crowd he runs with, God have mercy on us. And just like I said, direction, direction. Destruction is used watching this. It's got some bad words in it. When Brother Brian and myself preached on the uh, streets of Chattanooga, Tennessee, hey man, I, ho I, ho I hope you I hope you get something out of it. I know you'll get mad at me, but that's all right. Uh, somebody's always mad at me uh, anyway for preaching uh, on sin, none, godless, and, uh, and murdered and babied, uh, killing all the time. And this abortion crowd, uh, this uh, sodomy crowd, uh, this country is filled up with sodomy. And I'm talking about the hand of God is up on this country. And if my people, which are called by name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then God will do something about this country, won't he? But you ain't going to turn, are you? Have you done, you done made that turn. You made the wrong direction, amen. I go on and on and on. And I've been preaching on sin and ungodliness for uh, 38, 37 years, and practically ever since I've been saved. And, and buddy, if I made a lot of enemies, you better believe it. Uh, I'm, I could get on this, and I'm not going to right now, but I'm telling you, you better start living right, walking right, smelling right, spitting right, and dressing right, and get ready uh, for the coming of the Lord. Amen. That's all I say. Now, I hope you watch the rest of this uh, video. Amen. Shut your goddamn mouth. Quit making my 
about to take my fucking kids, dude. Have a piece of pizza and shut your fucking mouth. I have got kids down here listening to this man throwing a fit. They're scared to fucking death. This man is not a Christian. Christians do not act like this. Christians do not act like this. Have a piece of pizza, man, and shut your fucking mouth. And I think that salt, brother, that salt right there, I'm fixing to call the law on you right now. Did he hit you, Brian? Christians, you don't act like that, brother. I guess they act like you. <clears throat> no, sir, they do not. Christians do not act like that. Have a piece of pizza, man, and shut your fucking mouth. Have a piece of pizza, man, and shut your Thank you for that. 